So in order to solve this one, I want to start by figuring out, okay, what are all the pieces that I actually know? What pieces are involved with this? We know angle C is 60 degrees. So I know that's the angle that everything's going to be in reference to when we talk opposite adjacent hypotenuse. I know side A is going to be 14. And I want to figure out what B is. So that means I don't care about anything else other than those three pieces. Now I do want to figure out as I take a look at this though, what do I call those two sides? So let's start with side A, the 14. What do we call that side? Opposite adjacent or hypotenuse? It is the adjacent. And side B, that is what? It is hypotenuse. And so as I approach this problem then, it, I know that it's going to involve adjacent and hypotenuse. So then I go back to my notes and I check, okay, which one of the three trig ratios, sine, cosine, or tangent, involves adjacent and hypotenuse, and the answer is cosine. So now I can get down to the math. So it's going to be cosine of 60 degrees equals, and cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So I put the adjacent on top, which is 14, and I put the hypotenuse on the bottom, which in this case is the B. All right. Let's go ahead and solve from here. Remember, we go ahead and we multiply both sides by the denominator because my variable's in the fraction. So multiply both sides by b. When we do that, though, we have b times cosine of 60 degrees equals 14. I still need to figure out what b equals, though. I didn't end up getting there straight away. So I do have to take one more step, which is to divide both sides by my cosine of 60 degrees. And so we end up finding that B is going to equal 14 divided by cosine of 60 degrees. Now, based on the work we did yesterday, reminding ourselves about the special right triangles, we can actually do the rest of this problem even without our calculator. Normally this is where we have to pull it out, but in this case I don't have to because I actually do know what the cosine of 60 degrees is. And so I'm going to go ahead and use that. So I go B equals 14 over the cosine of 60 degrees is a half. And so I'm going to be doing 14 divided by a half. And it's always good to remind ourselves that 14 divided by a half, remember to divide by a fraction, that means flip the fraction upside down and change the division to multiplication. In other words, multiply by the reciprocal. So this is what we're really doing is 14 times 2. And so B equals 28. No calculator needed. Because it happened to be one of the nice numbers that we actually know. All right, now for this problem, we start the same way where we think about what do we label each of our parts. And so, again, angle C is 60 degrees this time. And then B is 10. And then I'm looking to find C. And so once again, I have to start by deciding what do I call each of the sides? Well, side B, nothing changed there. It's still the hypotenuse. So then what side C? It's on the opposite side from our angle, so yes, we call it the opposite. Now, which of our trig ratios then involves the hypotenuse and the opposite? It is sine, yeah. And so that tells me that I start by writing sine of my angle, it's always of the angle, so sine of 60 degrees equals, the definition of sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So I put the opposite on top, and I put the hypotenuse on the bottom. Remember, it doesn't matter which one we know or don't know, it only matters which one's opposite and which one's hypotenuse. All right, now from there I need to solve it. And in this case, that means multiplying both sides by 10. Now the nice part about this particular problem is that when we do that, we end up with 10 times sine of 60 degrees equals C. So we now know what we're actually going to calculate to get C. We don't have to do any extra division or anything like that to get there. But I do need to figure out what the sine of 60 degrees is. And yes, you should be able to do that one without your calculator. That's one of those values we came up with yesterday. And one way to remember it is that if we just use the fact that cosine of 60 in the last problem was a half. 
if one of the values is a half, the other value will always be root 3 over 2. They always go together. And you're going to notice that as we go into bigger and bigger pictures of our unit circle, that if one value is a half, the other one will be root 3 over 2. And so, this becomes 10 times root 3 over 2. And yes, I could get that root 3 over 2 by doing sine of 60 on the calculator, but it's just going to tell me it's about 0.87. And if I can get it exactly, I want to use it exactly. All right, now I do want to actually do the 10 times root 3 over 2. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply that into a single fraction. If I can get this thing to write correctly, there we go. 10 root 3 over 2 equals C. And you notice that reduces. And so that is just going to be 5 root 3. And that's our final answer then. So in this case, C equals 5 root 3. And so... Since we've seen that we need to know some of these exact values and that they're going to be coming up over time, add this table of those exact values into your notes.